Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to do a PIP once we've entered in all our people. Now we can do a, a property investment profile. Uh, easy. Go to resources. Uh, click single sign-on. You'll see sometimes it'll look like that. So click single sign-on. Create a PIP. Uh, choose a name. I'm just going to call it test 10 to go with the other one. Uh, choose which one you want to do. So a property investment profile. Hit next. Now for the contact, I'm just going to do it for myself. So I start typing. When I start typing, it'll pull my name up because I'm in my contacts. And then hit next. And then choose the criteria. Just go to edit. And then um, I'm going to do a radius because it's a pip. So I'm going to pull up uh, South 320th Street. Um, now it's not going to like that. So it's going to say I can't find it. It's going to want me to refine it. It will actually pull up the address for you and then just click save. Now, if I would have done 320th Street, uh, it would have been okay and it would have pulled them up. Now, we also we want to pull up um, on market. So select all. That's the actives. We want to go sold. And let's go back like 90 days. Now, you, this is just to set it up. Once you set it up, the system will ask you how far back you want to go. Now you can do um, canceled contingents um, also if you want, uh, expireds and pendings, maybe expireds go back, um, let's just go back three months again on that. Uh, and then the other ones you can choose whether you want. Now I wouldn't go in and do a lot of other stuff because we call this the nosy neighbor report and the neighbors just want to know what's going on. If you wanted to do it more specific and go in there, you might find that there's no data. So they'll get a report with no information and, and you don't really want to do that. Again, it's the nosy neighbor report. So we'll click OK. Um, it'll come up with a criteria and then we click Next. Now here's where you want to um, set the how far you want it to go back. So it's active. We're not going to put an expiration date in there. Um, let's say this is somebody that we just sold a home to and we just want to keep them up to date on what's going on. So every 60 days we're going to send out this report. Now if somebody has said, hey, I want to sell my house in the next two months, then put them on the seven day one and get it out to them every seven days. So this is a consumer type for a buyer, let's just say a seller because this is somebody we know. We could do it for a buyer also. So if it's for an area that we know that they're looking in, let's educate them on what's sold because the website won't do that. And we'd have to do it in the MLS and the MLS isn't going to be um, as easy to do. Uh, and it won't be branded and it won't look nice and give you all the other statistics. So this one we're going to do for the seller. Now we're going to go, we're going to send it out every 60 days. So what we want to do is we want to go back every 90 days. That way, every time we send them one, it will overlap and they'll get the same information twice in two different emails. Um, you can copy yourself if you want. If you're going to set up a hundred of these though, you're going to get a hundred emails. It's very easy to go into the contact, look at the contact, and then click on their pips and it'll automatically pull them up. Now you can show a market value. I would highly recommend that you put no on this just so that's the information that they have to call you for and then um, put in the property address so um, you know which one it is. Okay, then we're going to click next and save and close. So look at that. That took less than four minutes to do. So we could do that for each and every one of our clients and uh, good luck. This is a great tool. Make sure you use it.